Hey everyone, today we're flying to India to sharpen our trading skills as we learn how to play the colorful two-player card game Jaipur. Here we are at the Jaipur market surrounded by all sorts of sights, sounds and smells. The stalls offer six types of merchandise, leather, spices, silk, silver, gold and even diamonds. There are also herds of camels that each merchant keeps to exchange for goods. Can you smell them? Phew! Let's keep moving. At the heart of the marketplace, two merchants are fighting to become the next Maharaja's personal trader. Their dispute spans over three weeks represented by three different game rounds. As merchants sell and trade goods, their goal is to become richer than their opponent at the end of each week. The winner of the game is the richest merchant of two of these three weeks. So which merchant will have the honor to serve the Maharaja? Let's find out. Before the game, create a single market by placing three camels down and add two random cards representing various goods. Deal a hand of five cards to each player. All the camels that the players get during the game are immediately placed face up in their personal herd. That's also the case if they receive any during setup. Taking turns, players decide to collect or exchange goods from the market or sell some from their hands. Let's start by seeing how to obtain new goods and then we'll see how to sell some and make money. First, players can collect as many cards as desired from the market but have to replace each good taken with cards from their hand or with camels from their herd. A player can exchange these four cards from the market with these three cards from his hand and add a camel from his herd. In any case, a player must exchange the taken goods with different goods. Second, if the player decides to only take one card from the market, the player keeps all of his or her cards as well as all of the camels but simply replaces the good with a card blindly drawn from the draw pile. In doing so, the player never really knows what new good he or she is adding to the market for the opponent to grab next turn. Third, a player can choose to leave the goods but grab all the camels from the market. The player then takes all the camels and replaces them here again with cards from the draw pile. Why would a player risk revealing new goods in the market? There are several reasons, one of which is that camels are like wild cards and can be exchanged for any other merchandise. When a player is happy with the goods in hand, it might be time to sell. I say might because this is where part of the game strategy lies. A savvy merchant will need to balance the thirst to sell a smaller number of items quickly and earn a greater value for the merchandise sold, with the hunger to patiently collect more goods to sell and obtain an associated bonus points token. Let me explain. A player can only sell one type of good at a time during a turn, but can sell as many cards as desired for this specific good, with the caveat that if a player is selling one of the three precious goods, silver, gold or diamond, that player must sell at least two cards. The sold cards are discarded and the player gets as many tokens of the corresponding good. These tokens represent points, but they don't follow a one-to-one -one ratio with the number of sold cards. For instance, the first player to sell four spices will obtain the first four available spice tokens, respectively worth 5, 3, 3 and 2 points, for a total value of 13 points. As you can see, the tokens are all sorted in decreasing value order, which means that merchandise loses value as more of its kind is sold. Better sell fast to snatch the larger value tokens, which are worth points at the end of the round. The first three leather cards sold are worth 4, 3 and 2 points, while the six following cards are only worth one point each. As for precious goods, the first two diamonds sold are worth seven points, while the following three get five points each. Players might be tempted to rush in and sell fewer good cards as fast as they can to get the greater value tokens, but they may also decide to wait and collect more goods to aim for a larger sale and the associated bonus points. If a player manages to sell at least three cards, he or she can grab one of these bonus tokens to score more points at the end of the round. For instance, if a player sells three silver items at once, a player first grabs the three silver tokens, like usual, then draws one of the bonus tokens marked with the three cards. The amount of points is only printed on the back of the token and will only be revealed at the end of the round. The tokens for a three card sale are worth one, two or three points. The tokens for a four card sale are worth four, five or six points. And finally, the sales of five or more cards give eight, nine or even ten points. So is it better to rush in and get as many small sales as fast as possible, or wait patiently and maybe win the jackpot? 
While there's no limit on the number of camels in a herd, there's a hand limit of 7 good cards so players cannot wait forever before selling their merchandise. The game goes back and forth between players who must decide to take new goods or sell some and the round ends when there aren't enough cards to refill the market or when 3 types of the good tokens are empty. At the end of the round the merchants count how many points they have by adding up all of their tokens. The player with the largest herd of camels also wins 5 bonus points. The merchant with the most points wins the round and gets a seal of excellence. Reset the game, play another round, win two of the three rounds and you win the game. So merchants, let the battle begin and may the best trader serve the Maharaja. As for me, I'll see you in another playbook video to learn another board game. Take care.